Hello, my strong, strong friends. In today's video, I'm taking you guys through a full deadlift workout. If you are new here, uh, hi, I'm Meg. I'm a strength coach and a power lifter. So this workout, if you're looking for like a lower body, something to do for your deadlift day, this workout that you're going to watch is going to get you strong. This is taken exactly from what we did this week on Stronger by the Day. So if you're on Stronger by the Day, that's my monthly membership program. It's only $8 a month if you wanna join. If you're on Stronger by the Day, then this will definitely be helpful for you. We are at the beginning of a block of training. So some of these exercises you'll continue to see and we're gonna get stronger with them, of course. But if you're just following along and not a member of the program, don't worry, you can still follow this workout. It's going to be really tough for you, let me tell you, because I just finished it. And good Lord, this is like day, the first deadlift day of the block of training, and I'm a little nervous because it was harder than I thought it was going to be. But it'll be a tough workout for you. So yeah, if you guys are new here, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy this video and want to see more workouts, I've been posting these more recently and you guys have been liking them, just give the video a like so that I know you want to see more. Especially, I think this is my first deadlift workout that I've posted in a while. So if you like lower body days, definitely comment down below and let me know. All right, so let's just get into the workout. Of course, we're gonna start with a little bit of a warm up before we start doing some of the heavy stuff. First, I like to start with just a really simple like body weight or really lightweight complex. We're gonna start with some ankle rolls, kind of just lubricating the joints. We're gonna do front squats on our first exercise. So you definitely wanna make sure that your ankles are ready to front squat. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. Then I'm gonna go through a PVC shoulder pass through, opening up my shoulders. This is kind of just like a total body stretch getting the kinks out. I'm also going to do some PVC overhead press, a little bit more of a compound movement to keep up moving for the upper body, and then move into this run runner's lunge, just again, stretching, getting my body warmed up. All of these are dynamic stretches, so we're not doing any static stretches, not holding positions for a very long time. We're kind of just raising the heart rate, warming up our body for our session. Next, we're gonna do these clamshells. Um, when I was doing this, I thought it would be hilarious if those cutesy Instagram tutorials where the girl's like pointing at herself and like, you know, she's really cutesy. I thought it'd be hilarious if you were like, no, don't do this. But clamshells um, have been a new movement that we put on Stronger by the Day, and I've seen some feedback from some of our lifters who maybe aren't feeling this directly in their glutes. So the tip here is to shift your pelvis a little bit more towards the floor. You don't want to be kind of hanging back because then you'll just feel it in your hip flexor. So try to shift your pelvis a little bit um, to where you're not completely on your side, but shifted a little towards the ground. Next, we're gonna do bear crawls. This is a slow bear crawl. We're just doing this for time. We're not doing this for distance or reps. You're gonna perform two to three sets of 30 seconds for your bear crawls, and you're getting like one minute in between sets. Um, and just, we're waking up the core, getting our core primed and ready because we're definitely gonna need our core to feel strong when we're doing our first movement, which is front squats, and then our second, which is deadlifts, which is the main one. I always, always, always include some sort of shoulder prep, shoulder health movement because if you're a power lifter or if you're lifting really heavy, your shoulder health is going to be a priority. You may feel like you always have tight shoulders. So I wanna make sure that my, myself and all my lifters are never experiencing pain or just shoulder weakness. Uh, we're always strengthening our scapula. All right, like I said, our first movement is going to be a front squat and not just any front squat. We're doing a pause front squat. We're doing three sets of three here. In between sets, you're gonna wanna rest like one to three minutes. You might feel like you need that extra three minutes with these because they are very hard. You're going to tax your core and tax your low back. So if you need a belt and feel more comfortable lifting with a belt, definitely use it. Now a front squat is definitely a more advanced movement. It's hard 
start to get into that front rack position. Make sure that you're doing your shoulder health stuff so that you can get into that position, but it's just a more advanced movement. So I will include some substitutions here. You can do a double rack kettlebell squat that I have here, or you can do a goblet squat and you'll still get the same kind of stimulus. Just make sure that if you do sub a barbell movement, then don't be shy and going heavy. Just because you substituted your barbell for a kettlebell, which obviously you're somewhat limited with loading, go heavy on that kettlebell and try to get in a gym that has a wide range of dumbbells or kettlebells so that you're still getting a good workout for a compound movement, even if you're not that advanced of a lifter. So if you're running my program and you're making substitutions like this, and you can see here, you can also set it up on a cable. This might be the most comfortable um, or loadable one so that you can, next time when you see this movement, you're going heavier here. That is the key to getting strong. That is the key to growing muscles. If you're here because you want a bigger booty or something like that, then progressive overload is going to be the key that is going to get you there. So do not overlook that part of it. All right, now we're finally moving on to our deadlifts. We're going to do ascending sets. So these are going to be three sets of four and I'm starting at 80% and then going from there. So this is usually how I program um, at least in the past couple of weeks so that I'm starting at a certain percentage so I know that I'm going to get at least that weight. And then depending on how I feel, how recovered I am. So this is week one of a new block of training. So that just means that I'm kind of fresh. Either these are new movements or I just came off of a deload week, I'm coming in fresh and I have a little bit more in the tank than what I would two or three weeks from now. So I'm sure you know what I mean if you've ever run around on my programs, you like can't wait for that deload week whenever it's coming. Um, but the point is that you are able to ascend based on how you feel. Here we go. Easy, come on now. Good, push to the floor. Pull it. Strong lats. Come on, fill your belt. Last one, pull it, there it is. All right, Easy. once we finish those deadlifts, thank God we can move Easy. on to the accessories and get moving through the program. Now you'll see less compound movements, a little bit more isolation. Keep in mind that I am training in my garage gym, so that means I don't have machines to be able to fully isolate things. I lack some equipment, so if you are in a more bare bones type place, this will be a great option for you. So think about these if you ever find yourself without certain equipment or if you're at a really busy gym and you just can't get to the hip thrust machine or the leg press machine, these are gonna be good substitutions. We're starting with the single leg glute bridge. Mind you, I'm kind of new at glute isolation work. So I'm still working on these, playing around with a couple of new pos different positions and playing around with things to really get a feel for that glute burn that I need. I think I need to go visit Brett Contreras so that I can get some tips from the master himself. So hopefully that'll be a video in the near future. I am a big fan of his, definitely. Yeah, I'm just trying some new things with the single leg glute bridge there and then moving right into dumbbell box step ups. So this is the substitution if you ever are missing out on a leg press and have those programmed. This is a great substitution for them. You do just want to make sure that you're choosing a box that isn't too tall for you. I do like to hold my weight in one hand. That way I'm more so focusing on placing my weight on the one side. And then uh, you'll see me do this all the time in all of my lifts, basically. Okay, not all of them, because that would be weird, but many of my lifts, especially when I have a free hand, when I have a hand free, I'll usually touch my butt or my body in whatever place where I feel like I should be feeling that movement. If I'm doing a single leg glute bridge and I wanna feel it in one glute, <laughs> I'm going to give my butt a little poke, trying to just master that mind muscle connection. So that might be a good tip for dumbbell box step ups if you're ever doing those. Next, we have the final giant set, and this is so hard. This is probably the hardest part of the workout. We're starting with dumbbell RDLs. I loaded up the preloadable dumbbells and went heavy, ham, some may say, um, but I loaded those up, and these are not just any dumbbell RDLs. They are 
four second negative. So that's why I'm going so slow on my descent. The reps are kind of low though. They're three sets of six. So I was able to get through it right from there. No rest in between exercises. We're going straight to the band abducted goblet squat. I have 15 reps here. And let me tell you, after the front squats and deadlifts and those RDLs, my back was just like feeling it right at this first set. So it is a bit of a burner. Keep that in mind. Um, you see I'm wearing like knee support here. If you feel like you need a little bit of a belt, maybe you don't wanna crank your belt down that much but if you want to just loosely wear a belt so that you can feel yourself bracing slightly again do not crank it down um, that might be helpful for this movement just so that you're getting more comfortable with yourself in your intra-abdominal pressure the last exercise in this giant or yeah giant set are dead bugs after that lower back burn, the dead bugs were such a relief. The best way to do abs is like burning out on something else and just being so happy that you can now sit on the ground or lay down on the ground. Of course, with dead bugs, you wanna make sure that you're pressing your entire back and your low back into the floor, tucking your hips under and your ribs down so that you're in the perfect position to get the most core contraction. All right, you guys, that's all for my workout. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you do end up doing it, please do take a video and show me on Instagram or tag me in your post so that I can see. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And if you're new here, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Let me know down below if you have any ideas for what you want to see next or if you want me to do another workout like this. All right guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much, bye.